So in this video, we're going to talk about the application of Graham's Law to diffusion problems. Now, right, the equation is the same, but there are a couple of differences. Right? One, the rate in a diffusion problem is usually a velocity given in distance traveled over time, right? So rate is a speed of diffusion across that distance, okay? Now, since we're using that distance over time, right? If we take that speed in distance over time, and we know something about the time interval, we can get distance traveled. And so it adds an element of distance to the, the typical Graham's Law problem. In our first problem, we have a container of a compound called pentyl acetate, which happens to smell like bananas, dissolved in methanol. And we take that container and we set it across the room 10 meters away. And when we set it 10 meters away, it takes eight minutes to smell the methanol. And so how long will it take us to smell the pentyl acetate? Okay? So, right, if we look Right? Our interesting questions are, what is the rate at which methanol diffused? Well, we've got a distance, right? how far away the bottle is, and a time it takes to cover that distance. So it's 10 meters in eight minutes equals 1.25 meters per minute as a measure of that rate of diffusion. Right. Then we've got the molar mass of methanol that's given in the problem, but we could have looked it up. It's 32.04 grams per mole, right? It was given in molecular weight, but we know then the molar mass, right? And then we've got the rate at which the pentyl acetate moves, that's what's unknown here. And we've got the molar mass of the pentyl acetate that we can get from the molecular weight is 130.19 grams per mole. Right? So we can put that in our Graham's Law of Effusion Equation, right? So we have, right, I'm going to make methanol, R1, our pentyl acetate, 2, in our layout of Graham's Law of Effusion, right? So we've got rate 1, over rate 2 equals the square root 
of the molar mass of 2 divided by the molar mass of 1. And I'm choosing to put them all in the under the square root sign, under the radical. Right? And so now we can substitute in. Right? We have 1.25 molar per minute, our rate at which pentanoic acid is diffusing is what's not known, and let me make sure I make this clear, right, that's not molar, that's meters per minute, I think I misspoke, right, and that's going to be equal to the square root the molar mass of the pentanoic acid is 130.19 grams per mole, and the molar mass of the methanol is 32.04 grams per mole. Right. So again, we'll transfer that equation to a new sheet in order to keep working. So here is our equation transferred to a place where we have room to work. Right? If we do our division inside our radical, we end up with 4.063, the square root of 4.063, and we end up then with the square root of that is 2.016. Right? And it would be unitless because these units divide out. If we multiply both sides by the rate at which the pentyl acetate um, diffuses, we get 1.25 meters per minute equals 2.016 times the rate at which pentyl acetate diffuses. If we divide both of those by the 2.016 then we get 0 0.620 meters per minute is equal to the rate at which the pentanoic acid diffuses, right? But again, we have to look at our question. Our question was, how much time would it take, right? So our answer has to be in units of time, not in units of rate, right? Well, we know that rate times time equals distance, right? So, right, we move to where we've got room to work, right? So our rate, 0 0.620 meters per minute times the unknown time equals the distance, which is 10 meters, right? How far across the room that was. So if we divide, right, both sides by our 0 0.620 meters per minute, Right? We get that our time 
is 16.1 minutes. Now, we have to think about this, right? It depends on how we interpret the question. That would be 16.1 minutes after the bottle was opened, right? But we didn't smell the methanol for eight minutes, right? So another way of interpreting this is if it was, you know, 16.1 minutes total minus the eight minutes that it took us to smell the methanol means we would smell the pentyl acetate after we smelled the methanol. Right? So there is another way to look at these problems where our rate and time can be used to find a distance. Here's another common problem, right? When cotton plugs are moistened with aqueous ammonia and hydrochloric acid, respectively, and are placed in opposite ends of a 150 centimeter glass tube, where along the tube would the ammonia and hydrogen chloride meet to form a precipitate of ammonium chloride? Okay, so there's actually quite a bit going on here. Right? First is the reaction that we're talking about, right? Ammonia in the gas phase, right, that comes out of the aqueous ammonia solution reacts with hydrogen chloride gas that comes out of the hydrochloric acid solution and the combination makes ammonium chloride which precipitates as a solid on the walls of the tube. All right, so we've got a long, thin tube right, with a plug of cotton with aqueous ammonia that has been dipped in aqueous ammonia so that ammonia begins to diffuse in that direction and in the other end is a piece of cotton that has been dipped in hydrochloric acid and so the hydrogen chloride gas is coming out of solution and moving in that direction and our question is where in the middle will they meet? Okay, and this whole tube is a total of 150 centimeters. Okay, now, drawing a picture is often a very good place to start with a story problem if you don't know where else to start, right? Get a good picture. And you know, right, this is a Graham's Law of effusion problem, right? So you've got rate of movement of one divided by rate of movement of the other is equal to the square root of the molar mass of number two divided by the square root of the molar mass of number one, right? We've got to get information that relates to those things, okay? So if we're talking about 
ammonia, the molar mass equals, if the molecular weight is 17.03 atomic mass units, the molar mass is 17.03 grams per mole, right? We don't know the rate. We know for hydrogen chloride, the molar mass is 36.46 grams per mole. Okay, so there are our facts. We've got the molar masses, but we don't know anything about the rates. Let's get a new, you know, a clean sheet to work on and see what we can make of this information. Okay, so if we make the ammonia, right, Participant one and the hydrogen chloride, participant number two, right? Then we get that the rate at which ammonia diffuses divided by the rate at which hydrogen chloride diffuses is equal to, and I'm going to combine those, the square root, the molar mass of hydrogen chloride divided by the molar mass of ammonia. Right? Those all can go in the same radical. And again, right, the cross multiplying thing, right? Ammonia to ammonia, hydrogen chloride to hydrogen chloride. Right, and we know that this is equal to right the molar mass of hydrogen chloride is thirty six point four six grams per mole, and the molar mass of ammonia is seventeen point zero three grams per mole, and we have to take the square root of all of that. Right. So if we divide our numbers inside the radical, we get 2.141, the square root of 2.141, which is equal to 1.4 six, three, two. Again, keeping extra digits beyond what we know is significant so that we can round appropriately at the end. Okay? And so, right, what we just found out is that the rate at which ammonia diffuses divided by the rate at which hydrogen chloride diffuses is equal to 1.4632. If we multiply through both sides by the rate at which hydro hydrogen chloride diffuses, we get that the rate at which ammonia diffuses equals 1.4632 times the rate at which hydrogen chloride diffuses, right? So we have now a direct relationship between our two rates. Now, we still can't figure out what the actual values of these rates are, right? We don't have a time unit. So what else can we do, right? Let's move, right? We'll take this and we will move to a new clean sheet. All right, right, here we go, right? Here's our equation that we just figured out that our rate at which ammonia diffuses 
is equal to 1.4632 times the rate at which hyd hydrogen chloride diffuses. Right? So ammonia diffuses faster because we have to multiply hydrogen chloride times a number bigger than 1 to equal this. Right? So this number is bigger than this number. We just don't know what those numbers are. Right? But we can go back to what we said earlier was a, a difference in diffusion problems. That is, we can consider the distance traveled, right? So the distance traveled by ammonia is equal to the rate at which ammonia traveled times the time at which ammonia traveled, for which ammonia traveled. Right? And in the same way, right, the distance that the hydrogen chloride traveled is equal to the rate at which hydrogen chloride traveled times the time for which hydrogen chloride traveled. But if we put the cotton plugs in the ends of the um, tube at the same time, then the time that ammonia traveled should equal the time that hydrogen chloride traveled. And so, since those are equal, right, we can do away with this subscript there and this subscript there. Those times are equal. And so, we can solve for time. Right? If we solve for time, we get that the distance that ammonia traveled divided by the rate at which ammonia traveled equals that interval of time. And similarly, we get that the distance that the hydrogen chloride traveled divided by the rate at which hydrogen chloride travel equals that same interval of time, right? And so now we can set those two equal to each other. The distance that ammonia traveled divided by the rate at which ammonia traveled equals the distance that the hydrogen chloride traveled divided by the rate at which hydrogen chloride traveled. Right? But if we come back up here, right, we see a relationship that the rate at which ammonia traveled is equal to this number, and so we can substitute it in right here, right? And so we get the distance ammonia travel divided by 1.4632 times the rate at which hydrogen chloride travel is equal to the distance hydrogen chloride traveled divided by the rate at which hydrogen chloride traveled. Right? So we have eliminated one variable. We've got the rate at which hydrogen chloride traveled in there twice. So again, we're out of space. We need a new workspace. 
So here's this expression, right? We just figured out. And note, we've got the rate at which hydrogen chloride travels in the denominator of both sides. So if we multiply both sides, right, do the same thing to both sides, the rate at which hydrogen chloride travels Right. Now, rate divided by rate is 1. Rate divided by rate is 1. And so we end up with the expression that the distance that ammonia travels divided by our factor 1.4632 equals the distance that hydrogen chloride traveled. Right. If we, again, multiply both sides by our 1.4632 to get it out of the denominator, right? That divided by that is 1. We end up with the expression that the distance that the ammonia travels is equal to 1.4632 times the distance that the hydrogen chloride traveled. Now, we still have two unknowns, right? We've got the distance that ammonia travels and the distance that hydrogen chloride travels. We need another relationship. Remember that the tube was 150 centimeters long, and the two gases meet in the middle. So that gives us our second relationship. That is that the distance that the ammonia travels plus the distance that the hydrogen chloride travels is equal to the 150 centimeters. Now we've got two equations, this one and this one, in the same two unknowns, that should let us solve for each one. So here we've brought our two equations in the same two unknowns over where we can work with them on some clean space. And we've got that 1.4632 times the distance that hydrogen chloride travels is equal to the distance ammonia travels. So the easiest thing to do is take that number and substitute it for that variable. And so we end up then with 1.4632 times the distance hydrogen chloride traveled plus the distance hydrogen chloride traveled, right, that's still in there, equals the 150 centimeters. And sometimes it helps to remind us that that's one, right? That's one times the distance. So now we're going to add our 1 to our 1.4632, and we get 2.4632 times the distance that hydrogen chloride traveled equals 150 centimeters. Right? Now, if we divide both sides by the 2.4632,
right? Then, right? That is one, and we are left with that the distance the hydrogen chloride traveled is equal to 60.9 centimeters, right? So now we can take this number and bring it back up here and substitute it in there and solve for the distance ammonia moved, right? So the distance, the ammonia diffused before meeting the hydrogen chloride plus the 60.9 centimeters equals the 150 centimeters. So, 150 centimeters minus the 60.9 centimeters equals 89.1 centimeters and that equals the distance that ammonia moved. And there we go. We have found both distances from the origin. So that's a couple of examples of diffusion-based problems that have something different than we had in the effusion-based problems in the previous video. So you need to be able to consider all of those possibilities.